How's it going, you guys? So I just finished drinking my coffee, blended with two whole raw eggs, and today I decided to add a tablespoon of Brain Octane oil and a tablespoon of regular MCT oil, and um, figured I would go on a walk shirtless, <laughs> try to get some sun, and make an awesome video for you guys. So. Um, I felt compelled to talk a little bit about some of the diets that I've tried over the years. Um, I made some videos about my health journey, <laughs> but that's such a long topic and long videos. I'm not too sure how many people would actually want to watch an entire video basically talking about my life story, right? But I actually have a feeling a lot of people would. Well, anyway... Um, let's see, so, obviously, you know, back in 2012, um, I made a huge lifestyle change. I went from being, um, like a really awesome death metal vocalist here in the local scene, um, to starting to do, you know, gym activities and going to the gym every day, being more serious about exercise and stuff like that. Uh, and really, I was lost. Uh, I didn't really, you know, know who I was, I guess, because who I thought I was was um, Wolfgang, the death metal vocalist. But then suddenly that part of me kind of just like got destroyed, mainly because I realized how hard it is to maintain a group of like-minded individuals and maintain friendship at the same time as business um, and so, I started going to the gym and whatnot. Well, you know, taking it more seriously, because I was already going to the gym since like 2009. And uh, didn't really know how to exercise, was still fucking around. Didn't really start to take anything really seriously till about 2018, I would say. But anyway, um, back then, the type of diet that I was following was a typical wannabe healthy diet, okay? I was at the very bottom of the barrel, uh, very just like ignorant, uh, lack of understanding of what health actually is. And um, so I was drinking, you know, monster energy drink before my workout, um, pasta, uh, you know, lean protein, but also eating a whole pack of cheese at the time. And, uh, so, and then, you know, sushi, fruit, and then adding a little bit of vegetables, thinking that that was healthy. And before, before that, though, I forgot to mention, my diet was horrible. I used to drink, a, like, a whole four-pack of Monsters on a regular basis daily. Um, used to pretty much go the entire day without eating any real food, just drinking Monster, eating candy bars. Uh, my diet from, you know, the time I left my, my parents' house in 2009 all the way until, really until, like, I don't know, until I went keto, I'd say. But my diet, when I got out of my parents' house up until 2012, was pretty shitty. So from 2009 to 2012, I was just slugging down monster energy drinks, eating bunches of uh, candy bars, and, and um, especially at band practice, I remember going to the convenience store and um, we stop at the corner store every every day before practice and I would buy you know two to four energy drinks depending on how much money I had and what was on sale I would buy a whole like multiple snack cakes like uh, cupcakes and shit like that candy bars and it was just the most disgusting breakfast you could ask for <laughs> and so I loaded up on sugar it was horrible horrible I'm so lucky I didn't die of, uh, of diabetes. Um, anyway, so that was my shitty diet before I tried being healthy. Uh, so, so in 2012, I started trying to eat healthier and it was just like sushi, fruit, it was, you know, high carb. Um, you know, trying to eat more protein, trying to eat more carbs, trying to add a little bit more vegetables or whatever. Or trying to, I was trying to do healthy carbs, trying to do whole grain pasta instead of regular white pasta. 
And so, um, so that continued for a while. In 2013, I started watching all the fitness vloggers and stuff like that. And so in 2013, I started to do like vegetable smoothies and uh, I started watching like Rich Piana. So I started to think I got to eat big to get big. And honestly, I had no goals at the time. Like I was just kind of like chasing a fantasy that wasn't too clear for me. I didn't have a real vision. I just knew that I wanted to gym, live the gym lifestyle. And that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to live the gym lifestyle, uh, get big and eat big and all this crap. So I would buy these uh, giant um, cheese bread things from Sprouts. It's like uh, four bucks, and it's basically like um, a minute, like an eight-inch pizza without any toppings. Uh, well, with cheese and stuff like that, but it's not pizza. It's like a, it's like a cheese bread. And I would just like melt a whole bag of cheese on that. Um, then I'd eat a pound of beef on the side, and I'd eat like uh, another like pound of pasta with a pound of cheese or whatever a bag of cheese oh my god i felt horrible the worst i ever felt was probably around that time where i was uh i'd start my day with like um a bunch of organic vegetables just like blended with protein powder and milk and um and then and then i drink that before the before my workout so a gigantic blender full of like vegetables and and just tons of fiber just horribly oh my god um protein powder milk vegetables fruit bananas before my workout that was my that was my breakfast every morning that was my pre-workout some days i do like four eggs with like half a bag of cheese um toast uh, uh, margarine spread and jelly and I always wondered why I felt so horrible when I get to the gym <laughs> it's so crazy now uh, especially because now I do intermittent fasting I don't eat at all um, and I I'll work out three times within a 20-hour fast um, it's insane how ignorant I was back then um, anyway so that was 2013, and I was still drinking Monster Energy drinks, uh, still wondering why I felt like crap all the time, and wondering why, um, wondering why I felt so shitty. <laughs> and so in 2014, um, I started to study people like Dr. Mark Hyman and um, Andrew Weil, and so I stopped drinking Monster. I stopped eating you know white sugar I stopped with the white flour and so in 2014 I started I, I remember I went through a little vegetarian phase uh, in January February of 2014 I was um, trying to be vegetarian so uh, I would eat these large salads with um, with cheese and eggs because that's vegetarian <laughs> and I, I tried doing gluten-free putting uh, olive oil and everything and uh, didn't drink any artificial artificial caffeine right so I would eat coffee beans that was my caffeine source and holy crap um, definitely felt like it was an extreme thermogenic like it heated my body up maybe because it was I don't have a clue maybe it's because it was exploding in my digestive tract have no clue all I know is uh, I felt weak I felt lethargic, um, but I'd say I probably felt a little bit better than when I was stuffed in my face trying to be like Rich Piana in 2013, right? Um, so I was eating a lot more plants, um, no meat at the time, felt like crap, um, and I started to intern at um, uh, like a like blast fitness it's basically like a like a large commercial gym that basically was going out of business took over bally's total fitness and uh luckily they had an all-you-can-eat salad buffet next door so i would go there spend like eight bucks and just like gorge myself on fiber <laughs> it was horrible um so yeah so lots and lots of grains lots of fiber no meat and then around March of 2014, I started doing a Mediterranean diet because I was following 
Mark Hyman and Andrew Weil, and they're big proponents of omega-3 fish, olive oil, stuff like that, and, whole, and at the time, whole grains. So this was before Mark Hyman started to change his views on saturated fat and meat and things like that. And so I did the Mediterranean style eating. I would go to Trader Joe's and I would buy these like large bags of like obscure grains like black rice, purple rice, uh, quinoa, amaranth, millet and stuff like that. Beans and legumes and lots of olive oil and um, lots of organic grass-fed dairy at the time. And I'd have all these green drinks that I'd find on sale, uh, like the super green superfood powders or whatever, and I'd mix them in with yogurt. Um, and I remember that the yogurt tasted amazing with these super green powders mixed in. Uh, started to develop like um, white tongue. <laughs> Uh, started developing white tongue, um, started to notice a skin disorder at the time, psoriasis. Um, it was around that time when I started eating all these, um, like, uh, like obscure, like uncommon whole grain foods, things that you only see at like, at the time you can only find them at like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. You wouldn't find them in regular grocery stores. Regular grocery stores, only had rice and wheat pasta at the time. Okay, this is before organic food became like really huge. And uh, I, de I developed psoriasis during that time when I did the Mediterranean diet. And I didn't know what it was. I thought a girl gave me like an STD or something. Um, I, I went to the emergency room. They told me that it was scabies. So they gave me this like um, pesticide cream that I put on my body and it caused a whole lot more problems than it solved. And um, it's crazy because the whole time I was dealing with the food intolerance from the uh, whole grain foods I was, that I thought was so healthy, right? I thought that um, it was some kind of magical health elixir full of nutrients. Little did I know it was causing um, psoriasis and irritable bowel syndrome too. Um, just a side note, Pretty much that entire time from 2013 up, up until 2014, I was so bloated. I couldn't breathe, um, couldn't sleep. It was horrible. And I think a large part of that was all the fiber I was trying to force myself to eat. Um, and also the large quantity of food that I was eating in 2013. But nonetheless, um, when I went Mediterranean, I started to develop psoriasis and uh, intestinal tract disorders, right? So, that was horrible. Luckily, one of my best friends, um, he was working at a health food store at the time. And he was going to school to become a, basically like a naturopathic doctor. And, well, a Chinese medicine doctor, but whatever. And so I'd go to him. And he had me trying out all these different um, soaps and things. But he told me that it was coming from inside my body. Of course, these days it's obvious to me. I know everything about how that happened. But at the time, I had no idea like how eating foods could cause problems with your skin, right? So I tried neem soap. I tried all these different things. But... Little did I know, it was all the grains, it was the, um, the fibrous whole grains and legumes and beans and things I was trying to eat, right? So that same friend uh, was into the blood type diet and things, and so he had me uh, test my blood type, he even paid for the test, and he actually did it for me because the first, first time I tried to do that, that blood type test, I, got, uh, I cut open my finger and got blood all over the place and ruined the test. So he did it for me and found out I was a type O, which is like supposed to be the hunter-gatherer meat eater. Um, side note, um, the blood type diet, the majority of people who see benefit from the blood type diet are people who are type O's because the diet that they recommend is basically a paleo diet. And so most people that experience success with the blood type diet are people who are type O's and they eat a paleo diet. So the blood type diet doesn't necessarily create success because of the blood type diet, 
but it only creates success in people who basically eat the foods we're designed to eat, which are basically paleo foods, um, or the foods that create, that have the less, la the less risk for causing health problems. But, and also not to mention, um, type B blood types, the majority of them are Asians and it recommends dairy foods for those people. And the largest majority of lactose intolerant people in the world are Asians, therefore that completely debunks the uh, blood type diet myth in the first place. Anyway, so I did the blood type diet thing and it recommended me eat mostly meat and I started to feel better and couldn't believe it. Um, I remember going to, uh, to that friend's house uh, his name's Polo, uh, so and he became one of my best friends. Um, we I would go to his house or whatever. We grill steaks, and um, it was like a, a steak grill out. We do freestyle rapping, and we'd freestyle rap battle each other. Fun times, fun times, and that was the beginning of a great friendship. Um, the meat diet worked well for me, and this was around June, July. It was around this is around like uh, like May, June of 2014. Now I don't remember exactly why, but I decided that I wanted to try like a raw vegan diet around June, July of that year. So I, I ditched that blood type diet thing and I started to eat um, only vegan, okay? Because I think I, I, I ran into uh, Dr. Morse's videos. <laughs> I ran into Freely the Banana Girl and um, fully Christina raw or whatever the fuck. But um, the people who really got me were like um, Dr. Doug Graham and those raw vegan people. And they were telling me the meat was rotting in my intestines. And so they were basically telling me that the reason why I had a skin problem is because uh, I had fungus, I had candida, and um, I need to remove the rotting flesh from my intestine if I wanna heal. And it was, and psoriasis was toxins leaving my body. So, um, I went raw vegan and my skin started clearing up. My, my skin started clearing up. I started to eat the mono mills, like just raw fruits. Um, and no grains, no cooked starches or anything like that just raw fruits and my skin cleared up um now i felt weak as hell and i did this around i did this from i'm gonna say july all the way until around october of 2014 where i was just raw vegan okay i typically describe this period of time as two week or two months raw vegan but it might have been more like four but yeah, it was around July I started it of 2014. I ended in November. Um, so I ended the, the raw vegan diet thing because I was getting dizzy. Um, I was hypoglycemic. I was weak. I lost most of my motivation. I lost my sex drive. Now, interestingly enough, this is around the time when I started experimenting with NoFap. But I think the big reason why is because being without porn for so long made me realize how bad um, it was to my brain. I remember around this time I was actually um, taken to a strip club for my For a family members bachelor party. Okay, let's put it that way Just the, the most retarded um, Like the most distorted is what I'm trying to say the most distorted night ever like it was random crazy night ever and I was raw vegan during the time and I was at a strip club and I was not turned on by it at all. Now, mind you, uh, there's other reasons for it, but I think the main reason why I was completely repulsed by a strip club, besides the fact that I suppose um, I just recognize, you know, basically I lost my sex drive. Let's put it that way, okay? I couldn't even like try to have fun. It was weird. So, yeah, felt weak, felt dizzy, felt like I had hypoglycemia, lost motivation, lost my sex drive. But I felt like I was reaching spiritual enlightenment. Um, so I can totally see why all of these uh, raw vegans, like, they get all delusional and think that they're, like, they're the, the, the all one or whatever. 
um, the most highest or whatever that one guy nature boy says um, I felt like I was reaching Nirvana I felt euphoric and whatnot but I just could couldn't do jack shit I just wanted to lay in bed all day um, and so eventually I, you know I was some of my clients I was doing personal training with and stuff they kind of like encouraged me to start eating white rice so I started eating white rice around November um, and I started to get into, um, there's this guy named Brandon Gilbert on YouTube. Not really super popular because he doesn't really care about popularity, doesn't aim for popularity. He kind of just puts himself out there and just says whatever he wants to say, which I suppose is similar to my things. Um, but he's a much more like, I don't know. He's, anyway, um, he's into Chinese medicine and whatnot. Got, I started talking about tonic herbs and things. During my raw vegan experiment, I was experimenting with holy basil and ashwagandha and ginseng and whatnot. And so I was really into that. So in November, I started to try um, kind of like mixing Chinese medicine principles into what I was eating. Started, try, started looking into what foods boosted yang and things like that. And taking tonic herbs. And um, during that period, I started to see uh, food. After the raw vegan experiment, I started to see... Um, like these grains that I was having trouble digesting for so long, they were going through my digestive tract undigested. Could have been because all the bacteria that are, that are responsible for digesting those grains, the, the um, starch fermenting bacteria, were, they died off probably because I was raw vegan for so long. And so I was having a tough time eating uh, whole grains. And so jasmine rice was the only thing I could, I, I could eat, but at the time I was trying all different things. White potatoes were hit or miss. Um, and I was doing more of Chinese medicine principles, eating more soups and things, um, implement, implementing more tonic herbs, more teas. And I completely got off all like caffeine supplements during that year and started to do more teas and things. And I remember during this period, I started feeling so calm and so balanced. And this was like November, December of 2014. Um, and I felt a lot better, no doubt. And I think that's because I was eating a lot more like ener energizing foods at this time. Um, and so January, January, I, I still continue doing that same. January of 2015. I was still eating the Chinese medicine style diet, um, and I was starting to feel pretty good, but I was still had very little energy, just wanted to kind of like meditate, um, listen to binaural beats, and listen to my breathing. Mentally, I felt great. Um, physically, I was very low on energy. And then around uh, February, I, I got on a powerlifting team, basically. And we were doing powerlifting together, so I was uh, eating a whole lot of pasta and stuff like that, and fats and oils to try to get big. Started and, and I started drinking pre-workout at that time. Started feeling pretty crappy. Um, then around March, I started to follow the starch the starch solution by Dr. John McDougall, and started to implement some of the supplements and things that Michael Greger recommended. And um, basically did the, uh, the science-based vegan diet from March of 2015 into um, around June, around June. I think it was June 14th when I officially stopped veganism. It was around there. It was uh, like in the first two weeks of June, I started to, to add meat back in. So um, February, wait, yeah, wait, March, March, April, May, those periods of time I was strict, strict John McDougall, Michael Greger veganism. And I remember having zero energy. My irritable bowel syndrome was the worst it's ever been. And my skin psoriasis would flare up pretty much um, randomly depending on what type of grains and things that I ate. And I remember 
through that time, I was so fascinated with plant foods. I thought, I, I remember um, I was drinking turmeric for its anti-cancer effects and um, like as a cancer preventative. And I was trying to eat as much raw vegetables as possible because of their live enzyme content. And I just remember feeling like jack crap. Um, now, at that time, I was experimenting with breathing exercises. I was drinking a lot of yerba mate and experimenting with different tonic herbs. And um, I had a really, like I had a, a girl that was like basically giving me anything I wanted at the time, uh, all the sex I wanted, all the money I wanted. And so admittedly, I felt, I felt great like physically. <laughs> Or sorry, I, I felt great emotionally, I felt great uh, mentally, but I felt horrible physically. My skin was all fucked up. Um, at that time, I was like a salad shooter. Uh, I was eating the most fruits and vegetables and whole grains I'd ever eaten in my life. And I was just, because people were telling me the reason why I felt like I had low energy is because I need to eat more plant foods, like eat more food. So I was forcing down large bowls of, of uh, potatoes and all this stuff. Um, basically, if you see some of like those vegan athletes in their day of eating, I was trying to eat that, but I just remember seeing potatoes, tomatoes, uh, brown rice, um, you name it. I was seeing it in the toilet, <laughs> undigested, and it was horrible. And the turmeric didn't help. I don't think turmeric's ever done anything. I think there might be a minor boost in, in mood and cognition, um, but it's unnecessary now that I'm keto but, or that I'm carnivore, pretty much, these days, but anyway, during that time, I felt, I had all these health problems physically, but the tonic herbs, the breathing exercises, the approach to my mental game at the time, and the fact that the girl I was, um, I guess you could say I was dating her, not uh, with her officially, I, was, I guess I was dating her, um, she was just making me feel like, just giving me everything I needed. And she was buying me all these plant foods, right? We would spend like $200 every couple days on just like organic superfoods and uh, raw plant foods. And uh, that shit made me feel like crap, right? So I remember eventually around, around June, um, Early June, I started to add the meat back in. And I remember um, she told me, that girl I was saying with told me, she's not gonna buy it for me. Like that rotten flesh, she was disgusted by it. She was in the vegan, she was into the vegan philosophy at that time and thought it was disgusting. So I bought the, I bought it, I bought the steak. I started eating it and I started feeling amazing. Cause I was thinking to myself, well, so I feel, I feel weak and low energy because I need to eat more, but the more I eat, um, the more undigested, colorful salad I see in the toilet. So maybe I should just not be eating these foods I can't seem to digest. Maybe I should start eating red meat. So I started eating red meat. Um, oh, and yeah, and I forgot to mention, I was kind of like getting into the primal blueprint. Um, in mid 2014 like uh, april may june of 2014 i started getting into the primal blueprint but wasn't actually following it properly i was still eating whole grains so around this time though in like june of 2015 i started getting into the primal blueprint again i started to study paleo um was watching interviews and things with rob wolf um and so I started to follow a paleo diet. And lo and behold, all of the problems I had went, started to go away. Uh, basically, I ate nothing but red meat. At the time, it was lean red meat, because that's paleo. Uh, bananas, and a little bit of cooked broccoli. You know, and then some berries and oranges and stuff like that. And at the time, I, I, I allowed myself honey. I allowed myself, like, fruit juices and things. Um... And so I was following the paleo diet and it was working wonders, not only for my skin, but also for my digestive issues. No longer was I pooping salad out of my ass undigested. 
No longer did I have psoriasis. No longer did I feel weak and unmotivated. All of a sudden, I had unlimited energy. Um, I had no skin problems and no bloating. Didn't see salad in the toilet undigested. So basically, all these plant foods I was trying to eat for so long were actually causing me harm. Um, and I had no clue. <laughs> I had no clue. I was flooded with all this uh, horrible health advice from all these doctors and things. And, that, and actually seeing how unhealthy doctors were in 2012 was the reason why I went on this crazy nutrition journey because I had all these health problems that they couldn't help me with. And they themselves were super fat and unhealthy. So I was like, why am I even at a doctor's office when they don't even know how to take care of themselves? So, Jesus Christ, man. It took me three years to find something that worked for me, right? Three years to reverse my digestive problems. And during that time, I followed all these kooks. I followed Dr. Morris. I followed um, Dr. CB. I followed all these people, Michael Greger, who were telling me I need more anti-inflammatory fruits and vegetables. I need more fiber. I need more supplements. And... Uh, all it took was removing those fucking plant foods. Now, mind you, I was still eating like cooked broccoli. I was still eating raw greens. I was still eating bananas and stuff. I was eating a paleo diet, like a classic paleo diet. No potatoes, no beans, none of the new stuff they add, that people talk about. But the original paleo diet by Lauren Cordain. And it solved all of my health issues. So, so yeah, so that was basically the moment my entire life turned around. Um, I stopped talking to that girl, although she was cool. Um, and I started to just like experiment with different nutrition on my own. So I started to try to add back in oatmeal. <laughs> I started trying to add back in different types of rice and um, when I was vegan, by the way, I tried all sorts of things. I tried enzyme supplements. I tried probiotics. I tried um, fermenting, sprouting, soaking. I tried boiling, boiling the grains and beans into oblivion, like literally making a mush out of these, um, these starchy grains and beans. I tried making kanji, like a mush. And like cook, boiling that shit into oblivion didn't even help. I would still see it out the other end, just in a mushy form. It was horrible. I tried chewing it for two minutes, chewing every mouthful for two minutes at a time. Uh, I tried everything you can imagine, and none of that helped. Um, the craziest thing is, from you know when I when I had started my raw vegan nonsense, like in um, what was it like, like in July of 2014. I was convinced I had candida. I was convinced I had these, uh, these fungal issues that people comment asking me for advice about. I thought I had candida because I was convinced by all these like quacks that um, I, ha I had rotting stuff in my intestine. <laughs> and so it went away when I was raw vegan but came back when I was hurting the whole grains, right? So, crazy. Crazy, man. Crazy. Like, all these people telling me that I'm an idiot because uh, meat's bad for me, and I'm an idiot because, you know, whatever. They have no fucking clue. <laughs> they have no clue how, like, how much experience I have with all this crap they talk about. Like, these days I talk all about the science. At the time, I was all about, um the gurus, right? And, and then and their science. And when I started getting to Michael Greger, I started reading the studies. Then eventually I went paleo and boom. So uh, since this video is about 35 minutes long, I'm gonna make this part one. And um, let me just say basically that um, I realize all of those health problems I was dealing with. Um, I mean, there's a variety of problems I dealt with, not just the ones I mentioned in this video. But um, the main thing is the more fiber I ate, 
the worse I felt. Um, whole grains and beans, nuts and seeds in particular, caused me the most problems. Um, couldn't digest them to save my life. Um, and I figured that what was happening is basically these whole grains, these beans and these nuts and seeds, my, um, basically I couldn't digest them. Um, and I think it requires a long period of time of you slowly introducing these foods for your digestive tract to build up the bacteria required to ferment them and turn them into usable energy like butyrate for your gut lining. And I tried. I took long periods of time to do that, but it didn't help. So basically, psoriasis um, was a manifestation of these grains just basically sitting in my digestive tract. And the uh, the white tongue, I believe, was caused by the firm, was caused by the um, the abnormal fermentation of these undigested grains, because my digestive tract was not fermenting them with the proper bacteria. They were basically undigested and they were rotting as if they're sitting on a shelf or something like that. Um, maybe they were, you know increasing bacteria in the small intestine, causing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I don't know. All I know is I couldn't digest them. And anytime I tried to eat them, it triggered the psoriasis, it triggered the irritable bowel syndrome. And so I'm pretty sure my small intestinal bacterial overgrowth theory is probably correct. Um, well, one thing is for certain, um, I tried adding them back in from 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, I kept trying to eat these those foods. Never realized that those foods made me feel like crap. And whenever I removed them, I always felt better. Um, and over time, I kind of like developed little hacks to help me tolerate some of them. I can eat like beans and stuff every now and then. Um, in fact, actually, I've I've been able to add them back in and, and the little bits that I have, I've not noticed any problems these days. So I think maybe, because so going keto, going carnivore really, really helped clear up everything. Like every single problem I had is gone now because I've started, you know, eating a meat-based diet and removed most of the plants. But um, when I do add beans back in now, um, I do not experience discomfort, not in the short term, but I have yet to successfully add them in for long periods of time, so I don't know. Um, maybe that'll be an experiment in the future. So I will record another video, maybe some other time, talking about what happened in my nutritional experiments from the paleo discovery onward. Because I keep telling people autoimmune paleos will solve my problems, right? You don't have to go complete carnivore. You don't have to go keto. Um, so I'll talk about my journey from that point on because it, it's up and down, more experimentation and failure, trial and error from that point on. And um, I didn't just stop at, oh, like paleo works for me. I started more experimentation and whatnot. Um, and really around that time is when my, my YouTube channel started to get better and better and better and grow and snowball into what it is today. Another thing is all of this is all my nutritional journey. I haven't really gone into detail, detail about the different um, supplements I was taking during those times um, or you know my philosophy and perspective and how it changed. It's just basically the nutrition that I was experimenting with up to that point. So let me know down in the comments uh, what you like and what you wanna see. Do you wanna see uh, me continue talking about this in the future? Um, you wanna hear more? And I'll talk to y'all very soon.